people of God, take, eat, remember and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. People of God, take, drink, remember and believe that the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever 
and ever. For with joy we praise you, gracious God, for you have created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who became the true Paschal Lamb that was sacrificed for our salvation. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Let's join together in song singing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Mark 14, verse 32 through 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? 
Watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as, G- as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a, large, was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, Jesus said, that you have come with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. Let's join our hearts in a prayer of confession. Good and gracious Lord, as you gave me grace to acknowledge my sins, so give me grace both in word and in heart to repent and utterly forsake them. And forgive me those sins which my pride blinds me from discerning. Glorious God, give me your grace to turn my back on the things of this world and to fix my heart solely on you. Give me your grace to amend my life so that I can approach death without resentment, knowing that in you is the gateway to eternal riches. Glorious God, take from me all sin, sinful fear, all sinful shame and self-pity, all sinful hope and sinful desire. Instead, give me such fear, such sorrow, such pity, such hope, and such desire as may be profitable for my soul. Good Lord, give me this grace that in all my fear and agony to find strength in that great fear and agony which you sweet Savior, had on the Mount of Olives before your bitter passion. Almighty God, 
Take from me all desire for worldly praise and all emotions of anger and revenge. Give me a humble, lowly, quiet, peaceable, patient, generous, kind, tender, and compassionate mind. Grant me, good Lord, a full faith, a firm hope, and a fervent love, that I may desire only that which gives you pleasure and conforms to your will. Above all, look upon me with your love and favor. Amen. They took Jesus to the high priest, and to all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself by the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days will build another not made with hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you?
But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard this blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy! And, wi- and the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, She looked closely at him. You were also with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you are talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I do not know this man you are talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down, and he wept. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from sin. and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you were right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me.
will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. The chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. Now it was a custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and, Pilate, and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing that it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What sin or what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. 
but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was put on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see the, his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils of the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Let's join together in singing above all, and let's stand to sing.
the soldiers led Jesus away into the palace that is the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him and twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put on his own clothes on him. Then they led him away, led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him.
Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out but by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan, encircle me, roaring lions that tear their prey open with <coughs> who tear their prey open with their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, all, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted within me. My soul is dried up like a potsherd, and my, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. Pack, a pack of villains encircles me, and they pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the, the, the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember him, will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. At noon, darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, 
Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who, who, who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Preparation Day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning, summoning a centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. 
Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. During springtime, we celebrate the growing of light. As our days get longer, as the weather gets warmer, and as new life begins to spring up. But on Good Friday, we take pause and we acknowledge a growing darkness. As Jesus hung on the cross, the people of Jerusalem experienced physical darkness for three hours as the light of the sun was veiled. But more than that, the people experienced the darkness of a Savior rejected. Jesus, the Son of God, the light of the world, hung in anguish from, the, from a cruel device of tor torture and execution. In seeming defeat, his light, true light, was being snuffed out. The Pharisees and the chief priests thought they had won. Their enemy had been defeated. Satan, the prince of darkness, thought that he had won. For him, Jesus' defeat meant ultimate victory. With Jesus in the grave, God's plan seemed to have failed. All was dark. In sin, we too veil the light. We hide the light of Christ when we choose to look past the cross. We ignore the pain of a suffering Savior. Not just physical pain, but the pain of knowing that the ones he loved most are the ones who put him there. In darkness, we hide the true light. Embracing sin, we hide the light of Christ living in us. When we refuse to acknowledge our own sin, we contribute to the darkness, the pain, the suffering of our Lord and Savior. And we add to the pain of others those around us who need to experience the true light of God's saving love. Today, on Good Friday, we sit in the darkness. But it is a darkness that will not last. It is a darkness that cannot last. On the cross, Jesus did exactly what he intended to. His sacrifice for you and me was not so that his light would be snuffed out forever, but that his light would shine bright in you and in me. Christ laid down his life so that you and I would never have to experience the true darkness of sin and death. Even in our darkest moments, we can still experience his light. This light that set us free. Already on Good Friday, we can begin to experience the light of Easter as we look to the cross and as we give thanks to Jesus for what he has done for you and for me. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we sit today in the darkness, Lord, we give thanks for the light. We give thanks, Jesus, that your light was not snuffed out completely on the cross. But now, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that light now shines in our hearts as well. Lord, I pray that we might reflect your light in all of our lives. That even on Good Friday, that we might know that, that you are the light of the world and that we shine your light for all the world to see. Work in us, Lord. Humble us. Help us to recognize that it's our own sin that put you on the cross. Help us to repent of that and to live our full lives for you in the light of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
people of God, at the end of this service, uh, I invite you to, to leave in silence and to reflect on Christ's sacrifice. And I invite you as well to stand to receive a blessing from our Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.